My name is Anna Plotnikova and I'm a PhD student at Leeds University Business School. And today, together with Madalina Pop, we will talk uh, with Yulia Houts about her paper on open strategy, dimensions, dilemmas and dynamics. Hi everybody, I'm Madalina Pop from Aarhus University in Denmark and for our first uh, question, Julia, could you tell us how did you end up studying open strategy and why do you find it as an important topic for research? Hi everybody, thank you Anna, thank you Madalina for setting this up and for inviting me to be part of this and for this opportunity to share my thoughts on open strategy. How did I end up studying open strategy? For me, it was really a way to be able to combine my previous research efforts. On the one hand, I was doing research on corporate diversification strategies. And on the other hand, I was studying open innovation communities and how firms can use this practice to open up their innovation processes. But both research streams were quite separate and independent from each other. So when Richard and his colleagues published their piece on opening strategy in 2011, for me it was really a way how I was able to uh, combine and integrate my insights and experiences from both research streams. And I think it's really relevant to uh, study openness in strategy processes because it just reflects the reality that we are facing today and that organizations and managers are facing. Our society um, has become more open, more transparent in various domains. And we in our lives as citizens, as students, as uh, consumers, we have become used to the fact that much more information is readily available for us and that we can not only passively consume this information, but that we can actively engage and contribute information and share our knowledge in various ways. And research in fields such as open data, open science, open innovation has shown that um, openness in terms of transparency and increased inclusion can result in increased value generation um, with benefits of everyone involved. So I think it's really about time um, for organizations, for managers, but also for us as strategy scholars to acknowledge that times have changed and reality has changed and approaches, closed approaches, secretive approaches in traditional exclusive top management teams are just outdated. But rather we have this huge opportunity to benefit from increased openness and from involving a larger number and variety of actors in the strategy process. Another question with regard to those dilemmas is, do you think that there is some kind of interrelatedness between those tensions? And if yes, how do you think they are connected to each other? Or perhaps how do they reinforce each other? Thank you, Anna, for this question. I know I have just stressed the potential benefits and opportunities related to open strategy. However, I think it's really essential to acknowledge and consider that openness can come with specific risks, tensions, um, difficulties, or as we call it, dilemmas, and those dilemmas should be considered. Please let me explain uh, my answer to this question based on this graph, which is showing the five different dilemmas which we identify in our article. Yes, I think you are right, not all of those dilemmas are equally pronounced in each setting, and I think their prominence or significance might really depend on several different contingency factors. As you suggested, one potential contingency factor might be the fact if involved individuals are external or internal to organizations. Let me, for example, take the dilemma of commitment or the dilemma of escalation. Both dilemmas are very closely related to each other because both can raise certain expectations and if they are not met, this might result in frustrations, in anger, in demotivation or even resistance. In the case of the dilemma of commitment, individuals are eventually excluded from developments originating from their own, own contributions. And in the case of the dilemma of escalations, organizations might then be pressured to open up even further, to open up additional domains, additional phases in the strategy process. 
And I would assume that those two dilemmas might be more pronounced in the case of internal actors. For external ones, it might be easier to accept that they are invited to be involved only once or for one particular task along the strategy process, while employees might really develop much higher expectations of being further involved. But of course, there are additional potential contingency factors, as you suggested, also different kind of open practices. Think, for example, of the dilemma of disclosure, whereas increased sharing of information may even reduce shared understanding because of different interpretations or the dilemma of empowerment, for example. Here, involved individuals are required to digest an excessive amount of information, which can really result in a, in a case of information overload. In both cases, the dilemma of um, empowerment and the dilemma of disclosure I would assume that these dilemmas are more pronounced in the case of digital practices, where a very large number of individuals are invited to participate through broad open calls, in contrast to smaller analog workshops with a specifically selected smaller group of participants. I would assume from my own experience with companies in different kind of initiatives that it is easier to handle information overload or clarify misunderstandings in an analog face-to-face -face setting rather than in a digital one. But of course, these are just uh, assumptions. I think it would be highly insightful to better understand these dilemmas and uh, to have further research on the contingency factors which shape the importance of dilemmas and their prominence in specific situations. What do you think about cultural differences in terms of implementing open strategizing? Yes, Madalena, this is a question which arises quite often in the context um, of open strategy. Are there any differences across cultures, across industries, across specific type of organizations? And if we look at the first cases that have been studied in the context of open strategy, yes, these have been mainly organizations from the software or IT sector, which often have their business models based on communities or networks, for example, Red Hat or Wikimedia. However, in our chapter in the handbook uh, of open strategy, me and my colleagues have investigated several open strategy initiatives of many different firms. And we also see that firms from very traditional sectors, insurance, banking, financial service industry, consumer goods industry, and even small and medium enterprises engage in openness um, in the strategy process. Um, so for me, this is really a question which consider uh, the micro level perspective, so to say, and consider the individuals involved and how open the individuals are. So in the sense, do they have a kind of open mindset? Do they feel comfortable in sharing information because they believe the benefits outweigh the risks? How do they react if they have to solve a problem? Do they think, what do I have to do? Or do they think, who do I have to approach to be able to solve the problem? And I think it's really essential to better understand how the beliefs and assumptions of individuals can impact their behavior and actions, can impact their approaches to collect information, um, to, to make decisions, um, to approach problems and to interact with others. The next question referred to the methodological approaches to studying uh, open strategy. What would be your advice on studying open strategy going forward, given that it raises some of research dilemmas as well? For instance, one of the future directions for research is to focus on the link between open strategizing and its impact on strategy content. Such research will require a longitudinal approach to see the organizational implications of open strategizing over time. So do you have any advice on how to track and analyze open strategy influence over time? Yes, Anna, I think it's highly critical um, for open strategy research to be able to show and uh, further investigate the consequences of open strategy. In the research so far, it has been argued that two main benefits are related to increased openness. 
On the one hand, it's argued that you get better contributions, increased quality of ideas, increased quality of strategies because of increased diversity and heterogeneity of involved perspectives. On the other hand, it is argued that openness results in increased commitment and uh, buy-in from those who should implement and realize the strategy because they feel a sense of ownership because they have been involved. Now, I think it's quite difficult to capture those consequences. Yes, we know from open innovation literature, for example, that crowds might provide better solutions than, in, than individual experts. However, in the context of open innovation uh, problems, those tasks and problems very often refer to specific technological questions. And although they might be very complex, they often have a very specific solution or a good way to measure the quality of contributions and compare different alternatives. This might be very different in the context of strategic problems and questions. These might refer to the future direction of the company, um, the markets a company should be in and the business models that a company should adopt. So it might be very difficult to find the best solution and compare different alternatives. And even if a firm decides to engage in one specific solution, it might take a very long time, even years, to be able to observe consequences of those alternatives. So yes, as you have mentioned, one uh, solution might be to really engage in longitudinal research and follow and observe companies over several months, over several years, to be able to capture those consequences. Another opportunity might be to set up something like a natural experimental setting to pose a specific strategic question or problem to a close traditional management team and on the other hand give it to a open strategy workshop community or to a jam and then compare uh, the contributed solutions. Um, of course, you need to find companies that are willing to engage in such type of experiments. If we talk about um, the consequences related to increased commitment, it might be useful to move beyond qualitative case studies and engage in quantitative um, uh, research. Here, for example, it might be a way to conduct large-scale service among those who are really participating in open strategy initiatives and ask them about their organizational commitment, about their understanding of strategy, acceptance of strategy, before and after they engage in an open strategy initiative. You could also ask those who are not involved and see if there is a kind of positive spillover effect maybe so that there is a greater commitment to strategy if it is the result of a participatory process, even if you as an individual, um, you were not involved. Lastly, thinking about uh, the future of open strategy, how do you see the development of the open strategy field going forward? Uh, and this both in terms of what are the most important questions, but also in terms of methodological developments that we could uh, use to help us um, uh, break new ground into the field. Yes, I think I have already mentioned several ways and potential avenues for future research related to dilemmas, to a micro-level perspective and focusing on assumptions and beliefs of individuals, um, also longitudinal uh, research. Um, what I also like to mention is that recently very valuable and insightful suggestions for future research have been collected and published in the Handbook of Open Strategy, edited by Richard, David and Georg. So it would be really useful to um, read through the chapters and build on the suggestions that have been made there. What I think could be really helpful and really valuable is if we are able to continue to grow beyond the um, strategy as practice community and be able to motivate and encourage also scholars from other fields in strategic management, but also beyond to engage in questions related to openness in strategy processes. I think this could really tremendously increase our understanding and our insights 
into this phen phenomenon. So if you are a scholar and you are interested in questions related to increased transparency, increased inclusion of different actors in the strategy process, please go ahead, submit your paper to one uh, of the upcoming conferences, Academy, EGOS, SMS, nearly every conference now has a track devoted to open strategy and share your insights and your knowledge and be part of this interesting debate. Julia, on my behalf and behalf of Madalena, thank you so much for your time and for the great insights into your paper, but also into open strategy research. Creating an SAP blog post is easy and fun. If there is an SAP related paper that you feel excited about and that you would like to talk about with its author, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. You find the contact details of the SAP social media committee in the details of this video.